Key West was an awkward place to live when the Civil War broke out in 1861. The heavy military presence on the island meant that much of the island ended up being under control of the Union, while the critical Navy bases were fortified against being captured from the Confederacy, and the island became a critical port for the Union during the Civil War. The military had no plans to give up control of Fort Taylor or Fort Jefferson, and the military battalions were sent in to make sure that those Navy bases were firmly in Union control. Fort Taylor played a critical role in the sea blockade that was carried out by the Union Army soldiers. During this time, Key West had many prominent residents that were deeply Southern. Now, they may not have been as committed to the Confederate as folks from Charleston or Savannah, but locally, there was a large contingent of Confederate sympathizers. The majority of the Key West residents at this time were from the North, the Bahamas, or even Cuba. And many of the international transplants didn't have a strong opinion about the war, but they also had relatives that were diehard Confederate soldiers. So it swayed their loyalty during this time. Although the state of Florida seceded from the Union, Key West remained firmly under Union control. In fact, Key West Lighthouse was the only lighthouse in Florida that did not come under control of the Confederacy. It was during this period and because of Key West's geographic location that the tiny island of Key West played a critical role in the outcome of the Civil War. Inside the city of Key West, there were very clear alliances being made. On January 29, 1863, the Department of the South ordered that all of the Key Westers who had relatives in the Confederate Army and who had declined to take the oath of allegiance to the Union or who had even spoken words disloyal about the Union, and that would include those that flew Confederate flags over their houses and or businesses, all of those people were to be deported to Fort Royal, South Carolina behind rebel lines. As Union commanders were preparing to carry out the order, the town was buzzing. Many residents were seething at the audacity of such an order, and others were indignant that they were being forced out of their homes and off of their land. This order brought protest from both Union sympathizers and Confederate loyalists. You have to remember, both were living here on the island in a very small place, with Division Street being the main divider within the city. So as property was being sold and people were crying in the streets, it was just complete chaos. The men loyal to the Union lodged a protest, and soon the Union sent Colonel T.H. Good to Key West with the authority to suspend the deportation order if he saw fit. The day the deportation transport was set to leave with 600 Key West residents who were considered Confederate sympathizers aboard, Colonel Good arrived and immediately suspended sailing. And it was today, January 10th, 1861, that the state of Florida officially seceded from the Union, with Key West remaining loyal to the Union. Key West was the only southern city to remain in the United States throughout the Civil War. And that's what happened today in Key West history. Today in Key West history is brought to you by 43 Keys Media. To learn more about our illustrious past here in the Florida Keys and even what's going on right now, visit 43keys.com. You can find our shows as an Alexa Flash Briefing. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us anywhere where you listen to a podcast. And in the meantime, visit 43keys.com to learn more about your beautiful Florida Keys.